Next up at number seven in the Atlantic, we have the Detroit Red Wings. Uh, to me, this might be, including the Ottawa Senators, I think the Red Wings might be the most talent deficient team, at least in the East, maybe even the NHL. Uh, I think Steve Eiserman's walking into a pretty big mess. They have some prospects coming, I know, but most of those guys won't be on the team yet this year. Yep. Uh, what do you think Eiserman's going to do with the salary situation? Because Ken Holland, you know, he left a bit of a mess. Eiserman was known for cleaning up really tricky situations in Tampa. Can he do it again? with Detroit's salary situation. Is he allowed to drop an anvil on Darren Helm's foot? <laughs> I thought you were going to say oh, on Darren Helm. Nice. I was like, no. Ryan. That's it's not like, nice. That's dark, man. It's not. It's yeah. not. On no. foot? Okay. Foot. He'd be fine. <laughs> as long as he has his umbrella. Um, I, I don't know. It, it just kind of feels like the contracts he has to deal with now are like really unmovable. Like yeah, Helm they're super and Abdul Kader, Where and, and I don't think anybody's going to be like, helping out, you know, like you would have to give up some good prospects in order to unload those contracts. So you have to sort of do the, the calculus if you're Steve Eiserman as to, okay, how badly do we need to offload these contracts or do we just eat them for a couple of years? Because we don't have to really pay anybody right now. I mean, all our best players are still on their way up other than Dylan Larkin. So do you just kind of live with it and work around the salary cap and those guys take on, you know, pretty small roles? Maybe Seattle helps you out somewhere. But I, my, my worry would be that if you try to move those contracts, you lose a good prospect. And I, I just don't think Detroit needs to do that right now. I think Steve yeah. Eiserman has so much going for him as the, you know, the hero of Detroit returning to the organization to clean things up. I think the fan base is willing to give him time. I just came back from Traverse City where they have the Prospects Tournament. It's run by the Red Wings. Eight NHL teams are involved. The Red Wings actually won the tournament this year. It was only the second time they've ever done that. The crowd loved Moritz Sider. Like, yeah, loved course, yeah. him. There's a lot of goodwill right now. Yeah, I, I could... I, I couldn't agree with you more, Ryan. I could not agree with you more. I mean, if the if the intent was to either buy out those guys or move them for a loss, why do you hire Steve Eiserman, right? Mm. I mean, Ken Holland could have done that. Mm. Um, you know, a, a, a part of the reason why you hired Steve Eiserman is because he's a, a really really good at what he does and secondly is to is to foster some goodwill and to buy some time in this organization for these guys to get better yeah, so why the clock a yeah bit. so like like really like is Detroit looking at this year making a run for the playoffs probably not so like why are you gonna do that just to make a run for the playoffs when you've got to have guys that can play in the NHL on your team right you know it's all well and good to say you got to give this to the young guys you got to give these chances to the young guys but you got to have guys that have played in the league and yeah. know what to expect and can and like so so these guys now can maybe just become the elder statesmen the mentors you know these are the guys that bring in the young guys that that the young guys live with yeah you know that take that, them out to dinner. Yeah, yeah take them out to dinner you know work out with them in the summer i know that i know that uh that that holland said to you know a lot of the young guys in previous years is you stay in detroit in the summer and you follow Dar Darren Helm around like a little puppy dog mm. because he's going to tell you what you have to do in the summer to be able to be a, a, an NHL player. Mm. So that's where their value would lie. And what, you know, forget about the fact that you're overpaying them and you're not getting the production out of them. That's done. That ship has sailed and you're not getting out of it. So make them useful for something else and have, you know, pros around that that have played and, and have some experience. Right. It's, it's something that a, a head scout of a team told me last year and, is, and really reminds me of what you're saying. It's just that, you know, when a team gets a culture of losing and you, you kind of look at like, let's say the Arizona Coyotes of the past decade, it's like, if you have, if you don't have enough yep. veterans, then you yep. just, all they can do is learn to lose and lose and lose. Yep. And you have to have someone to lead them, even just a couple of guys. I think that's why they brought in Valtteri Filppula as well. Um, but switching over to the kids, you know, Philip Zadina, I think, is a guy that if there's any Red Wing under pressure this season, a young kid, maybe it's it's Zadina, um, because you look at his draft year 2018, you know, he's a guy that we some of us projected as high as two or three in that draft class. So we thought it was a steal. He falls to six. He makes this prophecy. Everyone's going to be sorry. I'm going to fill the nets of the teams that didn't pick me. 
and he ends up not quite being ready for prime time last year, just getting a quick cup of coffee. So this year, uh, do you see Zadina making an impact and being a surprise Calder candidate, or do you think it's going to be uh, still a while? Because, you know, the Red Wings have a, sort of a, a reputation of taking their time yeah. with most of their kids. And I, and I do not for that reason. I mm -hmm. do not for that reason. And all you have to do is look at Anthony Mantha. That was a guy that a couple mm. of years ago, they almost gave up on. You know, and now he's part of this core, right? And there's nothing wrong with there, there will be. If Philip Zadina spends the entire the area in the American Hockey League, I, I do not view that as a failure. You know what? What I'd like to see is for Phil, Philip Zadina to spend the entire year in the American Hockey League and to tear it up. Mm. And for them to not, to not, to be able to, resist the temptation right. to bring them up at some point, right? Yeah. Give them a good situation. Grand Rapids always, it seems They're like Grand Rapids always has a good team. Yep. They're always in contention. They win championships sometimes. You know, make him a part of that. Go down to the American Hockey League, play there all year, dominate at that level. You know, like I, 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 I can't, I can't, did that. yeah, right. Like absolutely tore right. up so the I can't, I can't yeah. say, I can't say that, that Grand Rapids is going to win an, a, a Calder Cup this year because mm. I, I Quite frankly, I don't know how they are in relation to everybody else. Yeah. But, don't tell but go that. down there, rip it up, yeah. become a pro, learn it, learn the game, you know, maybe win a couple of playoff rounds or a championship, and then you're ready. Yeah, you know, Zadina was at Traverse City again this year, and he had a lot of points early. Um, but when it came to the back end of the tournament, when, when we were there, he was good, but he wasn't their best player, and he wasn't even their best forward. Joe Valena was their best forward. When they had to make a comeback against Dallas in the championship game, it was Joe Valeno and Giovanni Smith that did all the damage. So, I mean, if I'm looking right now, now Joe Valeno is, is going to go to Grand Rapids because even though he's, uh, he would have junior eligibility, he's got, that extra he's year. got the yeah. exceptional status where he came to... Uh, the Quebec League a year early, so he can actually go to the AHL as a 19-year-old, even though he's Canadian. Um, Zadina, he's got the great moves, but I want to see more of him in crunch time. I want to see more finish from him when it matters. And yeah, I agree. If, if he plays in Grand Rapids all year, set goals there. Get 100 points in the AHL. Exactly. How many times exactly. does that happen these days? It hardly ever happens in the AHL. Yeah. If, you, if you get 80 points in the AHL, you, you you almost win the scoring championship, yeah. I think. Yeah, I think 83 won yeah, last yeah, year or something yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, so, yeah, rip it up. Yeah. Uh, and lastly, and this is a bigger picture question, does Detroit want to be good this year? And I, and I posit that they should not want to be good this year. You have a really exciting draft class. And, of course, if, you know, <laughs> you'd love to get Lafreniere, but it's, it's a draft class where if you don't win the first overall pick, you still have a chance to get a really great player. Oh, yeah. 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 It's, a, it's a sexy draft class. Yeah. Uh, so... Should Detroit not really be caring about winning? You can't tank, I know, but you can just sort of let the roster, like, you know, you could do things like keep Sedina in Grand Rapids, knowing that he might actually be NHL ready. Yeah, yeah. Because that yeah, way it'll yeah. keep the team from rising too much and yeah. it's going to give you yeah. more ping pong balls. To me, this is a year, especially because the top of the Atlantic is so strong right now. It's like, Detroit's years away anyway, so you may as well treat this as a year to get another big time asset. Sure, no? yeah. And, and I'm not sure it matters whether they want to be good or not. <laughs> I, I don't yeah. think it matters. It like this isn't a team that them. you would, you know, this is not a team that you would say, you know, if it if it got off to, if it was in last place overall, you, you'd say, you know, wow, they're tanking. Like they're not, you, you. They're just existing. Yeah, you said yeah. it. I mean, they're, they're, they're bereft of talent in a lot of areas. And so, yeah, just ride that until you can build up that base, which you are doing right now. For sure, yeah, yeah. They had a lot of great high-end prospects in Traverse City. And then you look at this draft, yeah, Lafreniere is the number one prospect right now. He's a winger, but then you got Quinton Byfield, who is a huge center. You got Alex Holtz and Lucas Raymond, yeah. both wingers from Sweden who are incredible. Um, you know, you got Cole Perfetti, Cole who's Fetty, a winger yep. Yep. Uh, out of Saginaw, and he is incredibly dynamic. So you can add to what's already an impressive bunch of young forwards and get somebody really nice to go with that. 